Today I'm going to be looking at an MIT entrance exam from 1869. Now you're probably going to be quite shocked when you see this exam just at how easy it is compared to exams that we sit nowadays, but either way, let's dive straight into it. <laughs> Cool, so this is the paper right here. It is seven questions, so we have seven questions. It is, like I said, the Massachusetts Institute of Technology, so MIT. It's an entrance exam from 1869 to 1870, and it is the algebra section. Now, I discovered this paper, I think it was either on Reddit or Instagram, and I have no idea what other sections there are to this paper, but I just saw the algebra section and as a mathematician, I thought, let's do it. Let's have a look. At first glance, you might look and think, the very last question is to solve some simultaneous equations. So these questions are probably gonna be quite simple compared to what we see nowadays. Now, this is just a reminder, if you haven't already seen my series on solving some of the hardest mathematics exams from across the world, I have done quite a few different papers and there's more on the way. So if you haven't already, then check out that series because I've had a lot of fun and spent a lot of time answering some of the questions in some of the hardest entrance exams from across the world. The very first question just says, if E equals eight, then we want to find the numerical value of the following expression. So we are quite literally just substituting E equals eight into this here. Okay, so I think what was kind of hard for me to do this paper as well was the fact that I couldn't really read it too well. It was clearly a screenshot of a scanned copy of a paper, so you might not actually be able to read the paper too well, like I wasn't able to, but we can see that we have an E here. This is a square root, and that's square rooting the whole bracket, I assume. We have a plus two. We also have another E here. We have minus the cubed root of E, and this whole bracket here is multiplying a square root of e minus four. So all I did was I substituted eight into here, 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 and here, which gives me this line here, and then some very simple simplifying, and we get the answer is 15. So the first question, very, very nice. I'm so far out of school now that I don't actually know where this type of question would crop up and what year, how old you would be to, to know this and to be able to solve this. So comment that down below as well, because it's interesting seeing a paper from the 1800s where mathematics wasn't as rigorously taught in education and there wasn't as much coverage of it like there is now. And there's also the higher level of competitiveness for institutes and universities nowadays. Now, question two is a very nice question. It just says simplify the following expression by removing the brackets and collecting like terms. A nice question again. So we have to remove brackets here. So I've done it step by step here. And all I did first was I removed these brackets first, which is what we have here. Then I removed these brackets, which is what we have here. And then we just did some simplifying, collecting A's and B's, and we get that the answer is 2A minus B. So that's the answer for question two. Now, question three is a multiplication question, and it says multiply 3a squared plus ab minus b squared by a squared minus 2ab minus 3b squared. And we want to divide it by a plus b. Now, something to note immediately with this problem is we can see that a squared minus 2ab minus 3b squared, which is this term here, we can simplify that and we can factorise it into this form. So when we divide by a plus b, this just cancels and we would get this multiplied by this. The hint for this question was basically just taking what we were going to multiply this by and noting that we can factorise it and take out an a plus b out of the factorisation. And so when we divide by a plus b, we get this answer here and I don't know what form it wanted it in in the question, so I just expanded it out and I got this form for it here. So let me know if there are other forms that you might have put yourself in the exam. Now, question number four is, it says reduce the following fraction to its lowest terms. And this is what we have here. Now, I think <laughs> I, find I couldn't really read too well, but I think this here is an x to the power six 
plus a squared x to the power 3 multiplied by y. The denominator is x to the power 6 minus a to the 4 multiplied by y squared. And what you can notice, again, we can factorise out an x cubed out of here. We can also notice that the denominator can be written in this form. And what do we notice? We have two brackets that are exactly the same, and so we can cancel them. And then this returns a very nice simplified form, which is x cubed divided by x cubed minus a squared multiplied by y. So that's the answer for number four. That's given I have read this correctly. I think I have. I think the way that the mathematics has been simplified here makes sense for the answer to be this. So hopefully that is the case. Are you finding the maths in this exam really, really easy? Particularly easy, hard, or just about on par with what you are used to? Well, regardless of your mathematical ability, I would highly recommend you check out the mathematics and other STEM subjects on Brilliant.org. Brilliant is a platform where you learn by doing. It has thousands of courses from across a range of different maths, as well as science, astrophysics, machine learning, data, technology, programming, Honestly, you name it in STEM, there are courses on Brilliant.org. So if you're interested in learning more advanced mathematics, there is the option to do that on Brilliant. Or if you want to start from the very beginning and refresh all of the basics in maths for beginners, there are also courses that allow you to do that as well. What I love about the lessons on Brilliant is that they are designed so that you can actually get your hands on problem solving. So you can do real world problem solving and it allows you to play with concepts. Now, this is a method that is six times more effective than simply watching a lecture. Brilliant helps you build knowledge little by little each day. As a bit of a tech nerd myself, one of my favorite courses on Brilliant's platform is their course on how large language models work. And if you want to try out this course, as well as everything else that Brilliant has to offer for free for a full 30 days, then head to brilliant.org forward slash Home or check the link in the description or in the pinned comment and you'll also get 20% off Brilliant's annual premium subscription. Thank you to Brilliant for allowing me to make really cool videos like these. Now let's get back to the exam. Now question number five was, was it a little bit longer? It was a little bit longer to be fair. It's quite a nice question really. We just have, we want to simplify all of this. And so we have a plus b's and a minus b's plus different fractions of each. So what I did to begin with was I said, well, let's make both of these fractions have a common denominator. So all you have to do to make them have a common denominator for this one, we want to multiply by a plus b. So we multiply both denominator and numerator by a plus b. So we get a plus b squared divided by a minus b, a plus b. And we do something similar for this one, but this time we multiply it by a minus b here and at the top as well. So we have a minus b squared and then the denominator is the same as here. a minus b multiplied by a plus b. We can do the exact same for what we are dividing this by and we get this here. Now we can see that when we divide both of them, they both have the same denominators. So we have a denom denominator here, denominator here. So when we divide, these two cancel. And so we are left with this expression here. Now you can simplify this further by expanding out each of these terms. And when you expand out the terms, we get this long <laughs> expansion here, but it simplifies really, really nicely to this form here, which we can write as a squared plus b squared divided by 2ab. So that is the answer to question five. Really, really nice. Now question six asks us to solve 3x minus 4 divided by 2 minus 6x minus 5 divided by 8 equals 3x minus 1 divided by 16. Now to cancel these fractions off the bottom here, I just multiplied by 16. So we have an 8 out the front multiplied by this. We have a 2 out the front multiplied by this. And then we just have the 3x minus 1, which is what we see here. And then we can do some very nice tidying up. We find this equation here in terms of x. And again, we can move 21 over to this side, divide by nine, we get that x equals 21 divided by nine or seven over three. And that is the answer for question six. Now, the very final question was simultaneous equations. Again, I can't remember what year I studied these in, but it is a nice simultaneous equation. So we just have 
7x minus 5y equals 24 and 4x minus 3y equals 11. So I said that this was number 1, I said this was number 2, and all I did was multiplied 1 by 3 and multiplied 2 by 5, and that's to make the coefficients of y, the y variable, the same. So we end up with 21x minus 15y equals 72, and 20x minus 15y equals 55. I've labelled them 3 and 4, and what you'll notice is if I was to minus, so if I was to take 3 minus 4, the y value here would disappear because we'd have minus 15y minus minus 15y and that would become a plus. So that would equal zero. Cool. So I did three minus four. We get that x equals 17 because when we do three minus four, we have 21x minus 20, which is of course one. And 72 minus 55 is of course 17. So we find that x is 17. Really, really nice. Now we want to get the y value for this back. So what we do is we substitute x equals 17 into two. I did that just because it was the one that I had to multiply the least amount by. <laughs> I thought if I'm, I'm probably more comfortable multiplying 17 by four than I am multiplying it by seven. So I substituted x equals 17 into number two, which is this here. And we find that 68 minus three y equals 11. And so when you simplify that, we find that y equals 19. And so the answer here is we have, we want to solve these two simultaneous equations and we have, we found that x is 17 and y is 19. And that is the last question on this exam. Thank you so much for watching. Let me know in the comments what you thought to this exam. And don't forget to like, subscribe and comment for future videos coming up. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you all in the next one.